again, if you're visiting, welcome. We are so honored to have you here. Um, I, I do see a few new faces, faces that I don't know, and I would love to get to know you after the service if uh, that's possible. So, um, all right. Well, I'm going to introduce our speakers. They're actually um, people that you know if you've been here for any time at all. And they're going to come up and they're going to share God's heart for us this morning. Tom and Susie Brock. Hi, family. Hi. Hi. Thanks for it. Guy, it just feels like coming home. Honestly, it feels like coming home, and I love that. Um, you know, we normally, you know how we, we normally tag team preach sometimes, but usually when we're here on a Sunday morning, uh, Tom does most of preaching because I have usually have done been with the ladies the day before, right? And given all the and that's what counts really is speaking to ladies, you know. So he just finishes up, you know, the cleanup crew. But then, so then Tom said on the way here, he said, "You know, they want us to tag team preach today." So I'm like, "Oh, that's cool." So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first three quarters of the message, and then I'm going to tag him in. Go, honey. <laughs> No, okay, I'm, I'm, I am going to share something the Lord put on my heart this morning. Um, you guys know we travel. Yeah, just, you know what, just take a break. Like I said, three quarters through, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you in. It's going to be the best quarter in the end. It's always the winning quarter, right, in the end, in the end. But um, as we travel a lot, you know, this is the thing I've always said to the Lord. Some people travel, and we've never wanted it to be, uh, we're not gig people. We're not one-night stand people. We're not like, hey, Chicago, we love you. Oh, wait, this isn't Chicago. This is our, you know, that's, you know, where we go, we pray about where we go, and we only go based on relationship. Because our heart is, is that we would see the kingdom built, that we would see families built. It's that, I mean, if that's not what it's for, then what are we doing, honestly? We want to we wanna be a part of families. In this place, we feel a part of the family. But I always ask the Lord, I don't want to, people say, well, what do you guys preach on? Well, I don't know. It depends on where we are, or who we're talking to. That we don't have this one thing that we're experts on. We're good at lots of things, right? <laughs> but, you know, I always say, Lord, every time I get up, I want fresh bread, a fresh meal for the people I'm going to. So that requires, what does that require? If you're going to bake, you got to get up every day. You don't go to the donut place that makes her donuts at the beginning of the week, and then you come on the Thursday, and they've been made on Monday. Or maybe you do. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it doesn't matter to you when those donuts were made. But for me, I like my donuts fresh. So I always say, Lord, for this group, for this moment, for this time, what are you saying? What do you want to say to the these people. And the Lord looks at us individually, and it's just amazing to me how he can, you know, it's funny, they call it the foolishness of preaching, how you can preach something, and if you're, if you're being led by the Holy Spirit, and you've come seeking to hear from God, it's funny what you will hear, because right. people will come up to me and say, oh my gosh, when you said that, and I'm like, yeah, I've never said that in my life. I don't even know how you heard that, because that is not even something I ever thought of. But hey, don't cut me off now. But <laughs> Tom's, Tom's got the cord and he's crunching, crunching it up there. But um, you know what I'm talking about? When the Holy Spirit's in the room, he's moving, he's speaking. We as seekers, what does the scripture say? When you seek, you will find. And that's kind of what the Lord spoke to me this morning. Five o'clock in the morning. I, you know, we come from Ventura, so we had to drive kind of a long way. What, what, how long is it? Morning. Hour and a half. It's not like the end of the world. But at, I wasn't going to get up at 5. I was going to get up at 5.30. And at 5 o'clock, the Lord woke me up, and I heard these words. And it was, cling, find, no, I'm sorry, seek, find, and cling. Do you guys all keep your phones next to your bed? In the old days, before phones, I had a pad of paper and a pen. So if the Lord woke me up in the night, and so, you, you know, you don't want to wake up your spouse if you're married. So I would do that crazy thing, like, okay, get the paper, and then I would write down what the Lord said. And in the morning, I'm like, he said what? I don't even know what this is, because you do tend to forget. But I love that we have the devices now, so that I just pick it up and, you know, write down what's going on. And when I heard that, I started thinking about it, and I thought how on a daily basis... 
listen, just in the first five minutes of being in here, just talk to a few people that, you know, how you doing? And you know when somebody says, oh yeah, yeah, really good. I'm like, wow, that's really convincing. Obviously, you're not doing good. I mean, your face, tell your face. Your face looks horrible, like you're not doing good. And within the first five minutes, like maybe three people that I asked, obviously, since the last time I've seen you, have gone through horrendous struggles. That's life, folks, that's life. And it happens to all of us, it happens to the best of us. You know, I always say, you know that scripture where Jesus said, listen, in this world, you're gonna have troubles. That, you know, I always say that's one of the 7,498 promises in the Bible, but it's not the one you generally um, calligraphy on a card and send to your friend. Oh, I got a scripture for you, praise the Lord. You know, thanks for that one. But it is a promise. You're gonna have trouble in this life. And it's gonna suck sometimes. I'm sorry, do you say suck? That's my French. You I know you say suck. But you know, that that's life. But the end of that scripture was, but behold, I have overcome. Yes. Right? Okay, well, Lord, that's good for you. You're Jesus. I'm not. No. What is it in Colossians 127? Christ in you, the hope of glory, right? Oh my gosh, why am I even here? You guys know it all already, you're brilliant. You know, really, seriously, I'm, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. So it's getting a hold of the Christ in me, the hope of glory, that will bring me through the storms that you will have, okay? But I thought about that on a daily basis. Sometimes, you know, I'm just going to be honest with you, about... Our, we have two adult children. Our daughter's been married 18 years. They have three kids. We have six grandchildren. Two of them are teenagers already. Our son has been married 10 years. 10 years ago, I went to my son's wedding. We went to our son's wedding. We, our son. I always tell Tom, say our, because in this age, you know, I mean, you got to say our son. And um, I, I, I weighed way less than I weigh now. I'm just saying. 10 years ago, I was way less than I am now. And, you know, I went to the doctor the other day, and I'm like, what the heck is happening to me? I have crept up 30 pounds. How is that even possible in 10 years? And so on the way here, we're talking, you know, and I'm like, you know, and he says, I'm just, listen, if we can't be honest with you, what can we be, really? And I, Tom's like, why have you been so crumpy? And I'm like, well, I'm just so tired. I just had a birthday, and it's like, what is happening to me? And, and I said, I try so hard. And he goes, well, <laughs> well, honey, that's not a good time to have that discussion on your way to a speaking event where you're going to stand up in front of people. And, he, and I said, no, Tom, I am trying. I tried so hard yesterday until the root beer freeze. And, and oh, then earlier when I had like a massive amount of chips and guacamole, oh massive amount, like shockingly, you know. And so, and I'm thinking in my head, no, my desire is to behave and to be good. And I, I read all the diet plans and I, you know, and, you know, I, I think I'm trying, but in fact, I'm not. And I thought about our walk with the Lord. You know, I, Lord, you know, you go to a meeting and you get all inspired about Jesus and your walk with the Lord and yeah. somebody preaches something that just stirs your heart and you're like, amen, I'm changing my life from this point on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read my Bible every day. Yeah. You know, the ladies here know I am big, big on, on reading your Bible, right? I mean, to me, it's like, you think you don't hear God speak? Oh, is it this? Okay. That was Tom stepping it on us again. Um, you know, if you're not if you're not hearing the Lord, I always tell people, no problem. He wrote it all down. So maybe pick up your Bible and start traipsing around the world looking for a prophet to speak into your life. Hey, listen, prophets are great. That's wonderful if it happens to you. But do you know that you can hear from God on a daily basis? Right? Just like you can lose weight if you want to. I went to the doctor and I said, what's going on? He said, well... He's a young man and annoying, and he scooted up the chair close to me, and he bent over, and he did this with his hands, and he said, well, you're getting older. I was like, you know, I, that's, I, I didn't do it, but that's what I thought in my head. But, you know, he, you know, and he said to me, he said, I said, well, give me something. <laughs> give me a pill. Just make this stop. 
And he goes, well, what you need to do is you need to eat less and move more. Boom, but again, really, <laughs> seriously, that's it? But do you know that's it in the Lord? Mm -hmm. Seek and you will find. Right? Oh, I love you guys. <laughs> Seek and you will find. How many times throughout the Old Testament and New Testament does the Lord, how many times, do you know how many times it's crazy? Seek, when you look for me with your whole heart, I will be found by you. Seek me and you will find me. Knock and I will answer. Over and over and over the Lord reminds us, here's the kicker. We know it. We know it. We, you guys are saying it. We know it. We don't do it. We think we're doing it, but we're not doing it. I think I'm trying to lose weight, but I'm not doing it. Okay, a bag of chips and a bowl full of guacamole is not doing it. Okay? In my heart, every intention of my heart is to be close to God and to lose 30 pounds. But if I don't make something happen in my life, it's not going to happen. Seek and you will find. I, I want Matthew 6.33 is one of the many, many, many scriptures that says it. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. You're in the midst of a storm, all hell's falling down, disasters come, and you're thinking, oh Lord, what do I do? Look for me and put me first. And I'll give you everything you need, all, all you need to get through the storm. All the shelter you need, all the substance you need, all the help you need, I'll get you through it. But you're going to have to put me first. Okay, Lord, right after I try to fix this mess. No, put me first. And then he said, he, and, and the part of that was, you'll find me. I will be found by you. If you think you're the one person that's not going to find God when you seek for him, you're not that special, okay? You're not. Because God's not a liar, and he's not going to become a liar on your behalf. You're not that person. You're special. You're That's right. You're a treasure to the Lord, but you're not the one that's going to turn him into a liar. If he says that you'll find him when you seek him, then you better seek him. And you will find him. And then, you know, the third part of that, the Lord spoke to me, was cling 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 we all know that scripture we give it in weddings when it says you know the man will leave his mother and father and cling to his wife we get that but do you know you know when i looked up the word cling in the bible and it came up several times both in old testament and new testament and it, it talked about clinging to the lord you cling to him you don't leave you don't do your your uh spiritual diet for three days and then leave him and to me, the whole thing, listen, it speaks of daily, daily, daily. Lord, I, you know, my life gets going, even in ministry. Your life can actually get so busy. It's like, Lord, seriously, I don't have time to read my Bible. I got a meeting to go to. I've got, you know, people to talk to. That can't happen. It cannot happen. I will dry up. I will be lost. I will, I will just like anybody else, you will dry up. You will be lost. You will think, Lord, what's going on in my life? Why is this happening? You know, where are you? You know, Tom always, you know, when we were young and we would get into spats, we've been married um, in July, 42 years. Thank you. This lady here, Cindy, stand up there, girl. She was at our wedding. This is the first time we've seen her since 1976. We saw you a year after we got married, but she was at our wedding. That doesn't happen often. And we both looked at each other. It's like, man, we're getting old. <laughs> what happened? But, you know, I, the thing, we, wow. we used to always say this. I would, I would say to Tom, well, I don't, I don't think you love me anymore or whatever. We don't do that anymore. And Tom would always say, honey, I'm right where you left me. And, you know, I think the Lord says that often, you know, to us. Hey, I'm right where you left me. Are you gonna Are you gonna wake up? Are you gonna come to me? <clears throat> Isaiah 50 verse 4. I love that. Morning by morning, he awakens me. He awakens me to listen as one being taught. He gives me the words to sustain the weary. And I think we think of that as you know, so that that's my ministry scripture. I I go to the Lord. He gives me the words. I can sustain the weary. You know what? I'm the weary. He gives me the words to sustain my weariness. And out of the abundance of my heart, 
I speak that strength that the Lord's given me, right? Amen. It's wonderful. It's glorious. Um, what was the first young man that gave the prophecy? Joe. Joe. Joe? So in worship, I saw a, um, a blue whale or a humpback whale, and it was out in the water, and it was just doing that big back flop. You know, it comes out of the water. And I was like, oh, what is that? It's so cool. It's like majestic. And people are so drawn to that, and people are desire to, to go out and pursue that and uh, taking charters and pictures and everything else. And I feel like the Lord is telling me he's, he's just doing what he's designed to do. Um, it's just, that's what they do. And um, when we are doing what we're designed to do in our identity, then people are drawn to that. And it's just an opportunity to glorify God. Right on. That's so, good. Wow. If you have the opportunity to glorify God, do it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's a good word. Joe, that was so good. I think we all got that. You know, I thought, you know, that is, if the Lord lights us, if we are beholding Him and being transformed into His image, right? We are beginning to glow with the presence of the Lord. He is in us. You know, I always do that Graham Cook quote. I don't remember anything about the quote except for this part. He said, whenever you enter a room, you change the atmosphere of that room. Amen. That's awesome. It's not because you're so amazing. It's because Christ in you entered in with you. Amen. And if we are shining brightly and we are doing and being and, and being with Him and reflecting Him, again, I always say this, you can only reflect what you're beholding. If you're beholding Him on a daily basis and you're reflecting Him, believe me, it draws a crowd. You know, people are like, you're different. What is going on with you? Or who are you? You're just doing what you were made to do. To shine with the glory of God. That is going to bring people to Christ. So I'm going to let Tom come up. I had a ton of scriptures, but I, I know it's already getting out of control. Yeah. But, you know, how many of you have been up to, while he's coming? <laughs> um, this is how we work. It's fine. We're fine. Um, how many of you have been up to Pastor Don's office? Okay, so... So if you haven't, so, oh, you're the ones that got in trouble. Now, so if you haven't, let me just tell you what it's like. It's like going into Bass Pro Shop, only small. It's like a little tiny Bass Pro Shop. It's so cute. And he had this, um, this little, th I was sitting up there and we were chatting before, and he had this little cup of dirt, which is like, I almost didn't ask because it's like, well, it's a man cave. What do you expect? A cup of dirt, you know? But I'm like, so, um, so what's this little cup of dirt? And anybody that's ever gone and had marriage counseling with them, you'll know what that means. And he said, I leave it there so when people come in for marriage counseling and they say, so what's the cup of dirt? He says, well, that was a cactus. That, that's my cactus that didn't get watered. That's so profound. That's so simple. That's so reality. Listen, even as believers, we love Jesus. We're serving him. We don't water ourselves sometimes. What do you think? You're going to dry up. You're going to dry up and water your cactus. That's all I've got to say. Now, here you go, honey. <laughs> and bow your heads. <laughs> all right. Don't encourage her like that. That's, you know, <laughs> we work as a team. I just want to just pick up on that whole theme because I sense that's something the Lord's saying in that area of understanding that it's the pursuit, you know, and it's the consistency of the pursuit. You know, this morning I was praying in uh, Genesis 32, which I know you all know by heart, but, uh, you know, the, the area of, you know, um, Jacob wrestling with God, yeah. you know, and, he, and, he, and uh, also what came to my mind is the old song, you know, by Kevin that, that I want, you know, I'm hanging on to the hem of your garment and I won't let go till the blessing comes. A lot of times we are microwave believers. And if it doesn't happen within the 30 seconds that we turn it in to heat it up, we turn around and we walk away saying, eh, and that's that. But I, I sense that many of you here, I mean, just knowing you as a congregation, you've been around for a while, you know, and you, you know the truth. You have pastors who have invested into you that they have invested into their own lives. And now it's a season of life where, you know, we should be harvesting those things of the kingdom. And I felt like the Lord said, don't let go till the blessing comes. Amen. You know, even if it seems you're wrestling all night long, don't let go till the blessing comes. And I think that even, even today, this moment, that even as we're together, 
the Lord wants to begin to show you that blessing. You know, um, let go only if you bless me. Well, that's kind of it. And I think even this morning as we are worshiping and as the prophetic words came as Susie was sharing that the Lord wants to bring about that presence of his manifest glory. You know, we talk about it, we sing about it, we kind of cross our fingers and click our heels together and hope for it, you know. But in truth, we need to see that presence of the Lord. We need to encounter and even as those words were beginning to come, I, I felt like the Lord was breaking that heavy yoke. And he wants to cause us to breathe deep and understand that that freedom is here. Because I think this, and we were talking with Don a little bit ahead of time, there is a season, we're in that transitional time right now. And um, this is it. I mean, it's not like, well, when's the birthday? This is it. Now, we don't know what second it's going to come out, but, you know, when you get to that point, you know, I remember our first child was born, and Susie uh, was going through tra transition, and she turned to the nurse and she said, I don't want to do this anymore. And, and the nurse said, I'm sorry, honey, it's a little late to be thinking about that, you know, and, and yeah, it was a long story, you know, anyway, but she said, I don't want to do this anymore. Well, you know, once you're in that transition, look out, world, here they come, right? And, and that's kind of where you're at. It's not always, you know, uh, you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting. Our second child, we went to the doctor and uh, we went to the doctor. Oh, well, you can just stay here because you're going to have that baby today. Two and a half weeks later, <laughs> we didn't stay, by the way. We caught on about a few hours. We're going home. But uh, in that, you know, it, they may say this, but the birth is chosen by the Lord. And this birthday is your birthday. And I just want to speak a few things prophetically, and then I think we're just going to allow the Holy Spirit to uh, uncover some more things for us. But in this, here, here, this is general words, but I think many of you will be able to hang your hat on it. And that's this. Some of you have had this prophetic word over your life that you would be instrumental in building the kingdom and that your garden would produce fruit that many would eat from. Anybody here recognize that one? Okay. And in that, I felt like the Lord said that you've gone up to that tree many times and you're wondering, what the heck? You know, when is this going to, you know, we have a lemon tree that just seems like we have green lemons for the longest time, you know, and now they're starting to turn yellow. It's, oh, look at that. And I think the Lord's saying, that's what's happening. Your fruit is starting to ripen and it's time to harvest it and to use yourself for the kingdom of God. It's no longer saving up for a rainy day. We had a great winter, didn't we? Yeah. You know, and I think it's time to begin to spend yourself for who you are and what you are and what you carry in the kingdom of God. Some of you have been, shall we say, saving up and, well, one day when I get here, that's what I'm going to do. The Lord said, no, you're here. It's transition time. It's time to move forward. What's going to happen in your lives individually will lay the platform for what's going to happen here physically, spiritually, emotionally, and so on. You already know, you, you feel it, you see it. You know, a lot of the things that are taking place right now, the attacks that are upon you, the frustrations that are upon you, even the new changes, the good things, you know, moving facilities stuff, that's all the natural speaking to the invisible. And it's time that we circle the wagons and we stand up and we fight and we wrestle and we don't let go until the blessing comes. I was listening to Joyce Myers last night, just uh, caught the last part of her, one of her teachings, that thing on, um, I, I don't know what it is, about her mind, or the book she'd written, yeah, yeah, The Battle for the Mind, mm -hmm. and she says, well, you quit, you quit. She says, you know, you don't have to quit, you need to begin to stand up and realize, it can be the devil. You know, it's not just circumstances, you know, and so how long are you going to wait before you stand up and fight? And I think that's a really good statement. How long is it going to be before you stand up and you begin to fight? Has God not said? You know? And if he said it to you, then where do we stand? If the word is the word, it's the premise by which we believe all things, then we establish our foot there and we do what Susie says. God's not going to become a liar so you can be the exception to the rule of failing. You need to see that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Stand that ground and begin to bring every thought captive and make it obedient to the word of God. So that's not just the logos, but the rhema. So when the Lord says, you will be this person that will do this, 
Well, it isn't just like, well, maybe when we, you know, the economy turns, or maybe when my house price goes up, or maybe when I get that offer, or maybe when my patent goes through, or whatever it may be, but you say, no, this is the day the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice in this day because this is the promise of the Holy Spirit. And I think that those of you that raised your hands for this prophetic word, the Lord's saying, take actions and spend yourself today. And I really believe that has a lot to do with physical stuff. I think money is involved in that. I think you need to spend yourself today because we had enough rain and our reservoirs are full. So let's, let's irrigate the crops so we can have a harvest. All right? Yeah. Now this other area too, there's this point of just a constant mental and emotional attack that's come on your mind. And it's like you would do it, but you just don't have the energy to go through, you know, you wake up in the morning, you say, instead of good morning, God, you say, good God, it's morning, right? And, and, and many of us struggle with that concept. And we're praying about the same things over and over and over again. Like I always say in January, I don't have to change much. Just take down my new year, just make that a seven instead of a six and let's move on because it's the same list we've been praying about over and over again. And I don't know about you, but I get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen. True? I'm going to hang on and I'm not going to let go until the blessing comes. And I'm going to pray until I pray. I'm going to worship until I worship. You know what I'm saying? That we're going to pursue the upward call and not just kind of, well, one day, you know, Tinkerbell will come and we can all fly away. You know, that's, you know, that's I know Orange County, we're into it, you know, but that's, you know, but the truth is, that only happens down the road. It doesn't happen in our walk here. And so in that, we need wow. to fly like we've never flown before. And those things, those places, that oppression, that mental stuff, that point of depression, that point of fear, that point of insecurity that says, God doesn't want to do it for you. I want to tell you right now in the name of the Lord, that is a lie of the devil and you need to stand up, tear that thing off of your head, and not wear it anymore. Well, you don't understand. I'm the codependent child who was born of an alcoholic whose mother did it, and she bumped her stomach a lot of times when I was there, and it was there, you know, and the Lord just hears that, and he goes, oh, oh, I, I, you know, if I would have known that, I would have died twice, you know, and it's like, come on. His blood is sufficient for every single need, and it's time that we grab hold and we don't let go until the blessing comes, and we take authority. Let's trade in our sorrows. Remember that old song? You know, let's trade in our sickness. Let's trade down our worries for the joy of the Lord and allow there to be a new day. Oh, you're just saying confess it. Oh, yeah, you're right. I am. You know, are you a faith preacher? Well, I'm not a doubt preacher. You know, let's go on here. You know, we need to move forward to a higher point of obtaining the glory of the Lord and not allow ourselves to be victims under the circumstances any longer. Amen. Have you ever asked somebody that? How you doing? Well, doing pretty good under the circumstances. He's like, oh, what in the heck are you doing under there? Right? We're more than conquerors, more than overcomers, correct? I'm not going under, I'm going over to the other side, correct? Tell your mind. Tell your face, get up, rise up, wash your face. The baby's dead, stand up, move forward to the future. Because the baby that is to be born is Solomon. You know the story? The baby that's going to be born is Solomon who will rule and reign and be known for great wisdom and wealth. True? We're too busy mourning over our past mourning over our mistakes, lamenting over, well, if I wouldn't have done this, then, you know, listen, nobody but David can, can testify. True? Yes. Look at his track record. King of kings, you're an amazing guy, you're wonderful. Oh, yeah, you slept with her, you killed her husband, and then you, right? Could he ever wear the crown again? The Lord said, yeah, and that's how that works. The baby is dead, but now the new baby who's coming is your Solomon. There's a new day of wealth, a new day of wisdom, a new day of reigning. Move on. Amen. Wash your face. No more excuses for why I don't do what I'm supposed to do and rise up to what the Lord has for us. Amen. I really believe that's important for many of us, that we just turn the corner. You know, 
you know, the old adage, you know, if the devil ever accuses you about your past, remind him of his future. Well, see, that's a good one. You know, we need to start thinking about, no, his plans for me are for good. Now, you know, that's in, in Jeremiah, right? 29.11, we, we, that's when we love to quote and give it out to everybody. But have you ever read a, ahead of that? You know, it, and it says, when the desolation of Jerusalem is completed after 70 years, right? Remember that part? He says, this is what will happen. And this is a greater promise. And this is why Daniel committed himself to prayer and fasting. He says, you will call upon me and I'll hear you. I will be your God and you will be my people. I'll be there for you. For I know the plans. And that's, that's why he said, this is important. Not just so we can get back to Jerusalem, but that we can be the people that are called by his name. You know, and he ends his, his famous prayer with this, O Lord, hear. O Lord, take action. Because we are the people in the city that are known by your name. We need to be known for our victory. We need to be known for our healing. We need to be known for our deliverance. Not that our coolness, you know, and that's another, I was watching, I was just kind of flipping through. I don't know about, have you, any of you have direct TV? I'm shocked. We have so many Christian channels now. It's like, and all these new networks. And I kept turning the channel, and we all look alike, and we all talk alike, and we all sing alike. Like, oh, we're not unique anymore at all. You know, you know, this is just this whole thing, right? But in this, you know, it, it's just this mundane, over and over, same old, same old. But I got news for you, and I think you know, Don and Carl have shared it with you already. There's a new day coming. Amen. You know, get your board, paddle out, because there's quite a swell coming. And we're going to see it like we've never seen it before. This isn't just, a, you know, you know, it always cracks me up when the news says, oh, we get high waves coming. And I go down there, it's like shoulder high. Like, we used to live in Hawaii. No, they're not big waves, you know. You know, when you say a big swell's coming, we're talking something that's going to shake the earth. And I think we're going to see that. And guess what? You're part. That's right. You're part of that new wave. And I just want to encourage you today to strip off the old because it's distracting you to the new. Yeah. You can lament over your problems. You can repent from your problems of the past, but get ready for the birth of a new baby. Amen. That child's going to bring glory to the kingdom. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Do not live in the past, but cling to the future and the promises that he's given to us. Does that make sense to you? Because that's the deliverance he wants to bring. Come Holy Spirit. Bring life. Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, we can hang our hat on that one. All right? Yeah. I just wanted to, um, I, I don't know, if there, can I use one of these guitars here? Because I want to get you all out of here. I'm going to start singing. No, but, uh, <laughs> can, I, can I use one of, uh, one of the guitars? Okay, and uh, I think, I, is there, I'll get there. I just want to do this. I feel like um, we're supposed to enter into this time of um, just the presence. That's good. Healing's in the room, okay? And that's, that's not a promise, it's a statement. Healing's in the room. And I don't think this is just, oh, my toenail doesn't hurt anymore. I, I think this is significant. I think some of you came here today with real problems. And we got a real God. Amen. So come Holy Spirit. I just feel like I'm supposed to sing over you. Which is, you can ask Susie, I don't do it too often. I sing over here and she slots me. But no, it's, uh, but let's just allow that to happen. So you can stand or you can sit, but we just take a few minutes and let the presence of the Lord come, right? Which one should I use, the Martin or the? The Martin. The Martin.
ideas of what should happen and what will happen or how it's going to happen The word of the Lord is available to everyone. Oh, Lord, speak over us, we pray. Bring liberty in this house today, we pray. So if you're sensing a word from the Lord right now, just speak it over the person next to you. Let that presence and that power flow. Oh, la, 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 la. We come against all the plans of the enemy. All those things, those flamey darts and arrows. We lift up the shield of faith right now. We put it over the congregation in Jesus' name. We speak it over Carl right now in Jesus' name. And Frustration. Yeah. We speak against that financial attacks right now. 
Those of you that have businesses that should be prospering and haven't. Those of you that have jobs you should have got a raise and you didn't. Situations that have arisen that have stolen your money. We break that right now in Jesus' name. say, Lord, we ask that right now you would bring revelation knowledge to the areas that we need to hold on to and fight for, that we would set the ground in order, that we could contain the blessings that are going to be poured out, and Lord, not just so we can contain them, but that we would be able to pour them out, which is the destiny of this congregation. We see that this is a garden that should prosper not for themselves, but there that be more than enough to meet every single need. So we ask you build this church accordingly. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, have a great week. If you need prayer for anything, there will be some people up here that can grab their badges real quick, and they will take you someplace and pray because we can't stay in here, okay? So good to see you, have a great week, and we'll see you next week.